Hey guys, welcome back. So a couple days ago, I guess it would be last weekend, I went down to my favorite store here in Ohio. It's called Colonial Homestead. It's an antique hand tool store. It's absolutely amazing. There's a video on my channel, there's several videos on my channel about it, but one I just did recently. If you're interested in seeing a short tour of that store, I'll put a link up here somewhere for that video. Anyways, while I was down there, some of you might have watched my live video and I talked about this tool cabinet behind me and how I would like to own it. And I did end up making a deal with Dan, the owner of the store, that day and I bought this tool cabinet and brought it home. I thought it was the absolute perfect addition to the shop out here. So I thought today in this video we would go over the few treasures I did bring home, including this cabinet. We'll, get, we'll take an in-depth look at everything and I'll show you kind of how I'm gonna use this cabinet in the future. All right, guys, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video. I don't even know where to start. I got some real treasures here. So I guess we'll start with this. This is a pretty much brand new Belknap Bluegrass draw knife. It, and it, it is nice. I mean, I it's hard to find a good vintage draw knife. And this one is exceptional. Now, I don't think this is that old. It's probably, I don't know. I actually don't know but it does have the original paper tag on it. Just a nice, good draw knife. Now, I, I do plan on using this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sharpen this thing and use it. I've been looking for a good draw knife to use, so that was pretty neat, and once I saw it, I knew I had to have it. The next thing I picked up was this really cool old wooden scrub plane. Um, it's not in the greatest condition. I've seen better. It was there. <laughs> And it's eh, kind of sharp, needs, needs sharpened. But it was there and it's all in one piece and nothing's missing. It's got the blade, it's got the front horn, the wedge, everything's, it, it's pretty much ready to go other than a good sharpening and I need to tighten up this handle somehow. But I'm really interested in some of these older wooden planes. Um, I don't know much about them. So it's kind of a introduction, I guess you could say, of me getting into some older wooden planes. But I, I really like the wooden scrub planes. I think they're really cool. So I did grab this one. Uh, it's got somebody's initials carved in it, or that might be the maker. I don't know. This guy here, it's just a panel marking gauge. I, I honestly bought this because it was in that toolbox that I'm about to show you. And uh, it was a nice size one. And I don't have one like this. So, and it was cheap. I don't, it was under 20 bucks. I would say one of the better scores of the day is this True Temper Kelly Perfect hand, Axe. Now, that's a four pound Dayton pattern axe. Look at that, that pole on that thing. It's just absolutely never been pounded. It's nice and crisp. Guys, when I clean this thing up, it is going to look brand spanking new. This is the original handle. Um, I know because it has true temper in the handle. I actually have another one of these, not the same head, but I have another Kelly Perfect with the original handle and the writing's real crisp and this is its exact handle. So it does have some overstrike up here, a little chip missing out of the shoulder. So it has seen a little bit of use. I don't know yet if we will try to save on this handle, probably not. Um, I don't know. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll just clean this thing up and, and hang it on the wall. I wouldn't mind using it though. So that's all to be decided in a future video. Now this cabinet is what I was most excited about when I saw it. Uh, it was just sitting there nicely displayed. He had some tools hanging in it. And we're going to load this thing up with a few of the tools that I do have. Common ones because they'll fit in the, you'll see. But he had it nicely displayed and I thought, man, this thing would just look amazing. Hung on a wall here in the shop with uh, a good set of hand tools in it, ready to be used. So, I mean, there's about a million videos we could do on that alone. But uh, this isn't its final resting spot. This thing will probably go over here on this wall once I get the wall finished, which I need to work on soon. But it'll get hung on the wall and we will hand select the tools that I think I need to do basic woodworking, uh, furniture, stuff like that. Not like build houses, but woodworking tools. We'll fill it up with those tools. We'll customize some of these 
fittings. You know, we'll get rid of some of these screws and hooks and put actual fixtures in there to hold different tools. This is gonna be really cool, guys. I, I'm really excited about this thing. Imagine being a woodworker and I don't know how what how old this box is or or where it's from or any of that, but it, it comes from a time where craftsmen were actual craftsmen. They didn't just use power tools and get the wood dimensioned down as fast as possible to bang out as many pieces as possible. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we live in a time and age where we have a lot of technology at our fingertips. And we should be taking advantage of it. But there's just something about the romance of taking a raw piece of wood and turning it into something. And that right there is what got me started down this long path of hand tools that veered off into axes. <laughs> That's how I got my whole start into axe collecting. And it, it's kind of coming full circle now. I, I've, I've got my axe collection i i have more than i need i have a lot of really cool pieces and i'm not done collecting axes don't get me wrong i just bought that one but it's time to get back to my roots what brought me to that in the first place and get back to learning those skills of taking a raw piece of wood and turning it into something i don't know what that something is yet we'll see that it, time will tell but I really want to learn how to use some of these older hand tools, learn how to tune them properly, get them cleaned up, and put them to use and, and make some really cool things out here. So this box right here is the beginning of all that. So let me bring you guys in for a closer look on this. We'll load it up with a few of my favorite tools or a few of the tools that I know fit in these slots and we'll kind of just go over it together. All right, guys, so these are just a few of the tools I have here that uh, I know would fit in these sl slots that are already set up. I don't even know what you would call that. Configuration? Whatever. I don't know what's going to ultimately end up in here, but I thought it would be cool to give you guys a visual of what, what it kind of would look like set up for a work day. So over here, you're gonna have your bread and butter wood planes. These are for uh, smoothing, making boards their final thicknesses and size and dimensions. So we've got a Stanley number four, a number five, and a number, is that a seven? Yep, number seven. And then here would have been a little block plane, but I don't have one that fits in this cubby. So I'll have to investigate that a little bit. So I also have a couple other planes that I, I, I think are really neat. This is a Stanley number two. It's not the smallest one they make. It's obviously the second smallest one they make. A number one is the smallest and the rarest, but the, the number two is pretty rare too. So it's really neat to have one of these. And then behind it, I have a really nice number three. So I don't know ultimately what planes I'll have in here, 
but that's a good start. Pretty cool looking configuration. Over here, I threw up a spoke shave because it seemed to fit in there very well. Obviously, we have our draw knife. And then this shelf I just kind of used for a scraper, a router plane, a scrub plane, and a couple of uh, hand tool rescue screwdrivers. Those are, those are really nice screwdrivers. If you guys don't know who hand tool rescue is, go check that out. Over on this side, we got more hand tools. Good set of old cabinet screwdrivers. I put a, a, a Stanley awl in there. This is a Yankee ratcheting screwdriver. I think it's pretty neat. This is just a little uh, flat bladed screwdriver. Then my marking gauges are up here. I went ahead and threw in my Japanese pull saw. I really like that Japanese pull saw. I actually use that quite often for different things. A couple of squares. One of my Nicholson rasp with handle. Now, I do have the rasp available on my website still. I am currently working on reproducing these handles. So if you're, if you were wanting a handle, um, I'll have them soon. I don't know when, but soon. Uh, that another reason to sign up for the newsletter. You'll know when those handles are available. But uh, we are in the process of manufacturing them. We ordered the springs. We sourced those in the USA. And then obviously the handles are going to be turned in USA. This is more on this later because I'm letting the cat out of the bag. And then I do have a nice full set of Stanley Sweetheart chisels. These are newer chisels. Uh, Stanley redid these uh, Sweetheart chisels. I don't know how long ago. But there's a 750 series. These are just really nice wood chisels. Um, nice full set in there. So, that's how I got it set up for now. I almost forgot to talk about the fa my favorite part of this toolbox is these drawers. Look at these drawers. They're just perfect for holding little things. I got an assortment of knives and awls in there. Um, I tossed these in here. These are um, basically old school multi-tools. More on those later. But it's just got a nice set of drawers. This one's got dividers in. I'll probably put screws or something. I really like this bank of drawers. It just really adds to the toolbox. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of this toolbox and the tools that I purchased the other day. I often say it's all about the hunt, and it really is. I, I get more pleasure out of hunting for these old treasures than I do actually owning them. I think it's really neat. It's history we need to preserve. Some of these skills to maintain these tools and use these tools is being lost every day. And I'm happy to be one of those people that help preserve those skills and get pe new people interest in them as well. Guys, if we don't protect it, we're going to lose it. <laughs> so... That's pretty much it for today's video. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.